Special thanks to Ala Majid for assisting with the translation of that piece. Rick Rowley joining us now in our studio, independent journalist with Big Noise Films. He's traveled to Iraq frequently as an unembedded journalist uh, since the 2003 invasion. So describe when you saw this WikiLeaks footage, you were there the next day uh, in 2007. I saw, I first saw the story at midnight and realized that we'd been there and the next morning rushed to check the footage and, and found that in fact, it was the it was the same event. But when we went out there that day, Dave and I, we weren't looking to document an American massacre. We went to this neighborhood because this is a neighborhood full of refugees. And as soon as we arrived and got out of our car, um, you know, an experience that will be common to all uh, unembedded journalists, we were instantly surrounded by a crowd of people who took us to where the attack happened and started telling their stories. So in other words, when you went there, there hadn't even been a, 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 a military or public announcement of what had happened the um, day before. There was there was a, a the Reuters had reported it uh, that it had happened somewhere, but we didn't we didn't know the details and we certainly weren't looking for it we were uh, we were unembedded doing a story on refugees and and, and happened upon this neighborhood and but the military initially claimed that it was all insurgents uh, that had died but obviously the uh, as we have now seen as the world has now seen from the video uh, the soldiers in the helicopter realized that children had been killed uh, almost immediately yeah I mean the children were injured they did they yeah, I'm sorry, injured. but but yeah I mean the um, uh, the thing that was most chilling to me about this, as an independent journalist who works uh, unembedded often, is that uh, when, the, when the reports came out, uh, the military investigations came out a few, a few days later, you can read them all on the internet now, uh, and they basically, I mean, essentially they blame the reporters for, for, for causing this. They say they, were, they did three things wrong. First, uh, they failed to identify themselves to, uh, to a helicopter gunship flying, uh, I don't know, hundreds of feet above their heads. Second, their proximity to armed insurgents uh, was reason for them to be killed. And third, uh, their uh, furtive attempt to take a, po a photograph of, uh, of American troops. I mean, so, first of all, there is no reason at all to believe uh, or to conclude that any of the people in that picture are armed insurgents. I mean, you can see two men with Kalashnikovs, but this is 2007 in Baghdad. This is the height of the Civil War when dozens of bodies a day were being picked up from the street, when, uh, uh, when sectarian militias filled the, uh, the Iraqi security forces, the police and the army. Every neighborhood in Baghdad uh, organized its own, its own protection force, and it was legal at the time for every household to own a Kalashnikov in, in, in Iraq. And every household I ever went to did. So the presence of two men dangling at their sides, Kalashnikovs, in a crowd of, of, of civilians who, who have no weapons at all, uh, I mean, is absolutely no, I mean, it's, the whole thing is ridiculous. I want to play, Rick, another clip from the U.S. helicopter footage. Here, the voices in the cockpit laugh as a Bradley tank drives over a body of one of the Iraqi victims. From that is from the military's own footage. Again, this is military footage from the Apache helicopter with those radio transmissions of the soldiers speaking to each other. What did the residents say about that body? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm a journalist, and I I go and talk to people and report what they said. And these residents came and told me that uh, that the man who they drove over was alive. That he had crawled out of the out of the van that had been shot to pieces, uh, and that he was still alive when the Americans drove over him and, and cut him in half, basically with a Bradley or tank or whatever armored vehicle they were driving in. Well, we're going to link to uh, both the Army documents of their initial investigation, uh, as well as your piece and the WikiLeaks.org uh, footage. WikiLeaks says they got this footage from someone within the military who wanted this information out. Thanks very much, Rick Rowley. Rick Rowley, independent journalist with Big Noise Films, who has traveled to Iraq and Afghanistan frequently as an unembedded journalist. He was at the site of the 2007 attack uh, the next day. This is Democracy Now! We'll be back in a minute.